The next rule we have is the power rule. This is if you have x to any power. So something more interesting, not just taking the antiderivative of a constant, but something with an actual x in it. So x to any power inside our integrand. So we use our take the integral symbol, x to the n, and that dx just means with respect to x. We're doing single variable calculus. So we want to do an antiderivative, the opposite of taking a derivative. So we want to remember what we did for a derivative. The derivative of x to a power. What we did is we brought down the power and we subtracted 1 to get our new power. So we brought down that power, we really multiplied out front. And then we subtracted 1 for the new power. Now we're doing an antiderivative. So we're going to do the opposite of that. So the opposite of the operation multiplication out front it means we're going to divide. And then the opposite of subtracting 1 would be adding 1. So we're going to add 1 and divide by that new power. So we're going to add 1 for a new power, and we're going to divide by it out front instead of multiplying by the old power like before. And then all antiderivatives end with a plus c. So add 1, divide by it, put it as your new power. There's lots of ways to say this rule. It's not any harder than subtracting 1. I actually think adding 1 is a little bit easier normally. Um, it's just a different rule to remember. So what had a derivative of x squared would follow this rule. We have a power 2. 2 plus 1 is 3. So I'm going to add 1. That's going to go in my denominator. And it's going to go up top as my power plus c. This feels very new. So let me check that we're doing this right. Your antiderivative is correct if you can take the derivative of it and get back to what was in the integrand. So I'm going to check that when I take the derivative of my answer, I get back to x squared, the original function. So we're going to bring down the power here. We're going to have 1 third, our constant, multiplied by 3, our power. And then we subtract 1 from the new power, which is 2. And then taking the derivative of c is just 0. So when we take the derivative, we get 1 third times 3x cubed. Those 3s will cancel. We get back to x squared, exactly what was in the integrand. So yes, this rule works. Add 1, put it as your power, and then make sure you divide by that new power too. So if we do that again for the next one, we have x to the third. Add 1 to 3, we're going to put it in the denominator and up top as our power. So we're going to have 1 over 3 plus 1 is 4, x to the 4 plus c. You could check it if you're still feeling unsure, but I'm feeling pretty good now that I checked the first one. So I'm just going to keep moving through. So think about what is the derivative, or antiderivative rather, of x to the 99. Antiderivative, we add 1. 99 plus 1 is 100. So 1 over 100, x to the 100 plus c. Now the only way that this could get harder is if we have a more difficult original function. So this next one, we would have to do some algebra to rewrite it to take the derivative of it. So we're going to have to do some algebra to rewrite it to take the antiderivative of it as well. So if you have x to the 7th in the denominator, that's really x to the negative 7. I'm still going to keep my take the integral symbol because I'm this is not my answer. All I'm doing is rewriting the original function. And then I still have a dx on it because every take the integral symbol is going to get a dx or dt if you're with respect to time, something like that. So now I can apply this rule, though. I have x to the negative 7. Negative 7 plus 1 is negative 6. So I'm going to put negative 6 in the denominator, and negative 6 is my new power. And then I'm going to write plus c. So just make sure you're not writing these take the integral symbols in part of your answer, because we only write that if we have to rewrite a function like we did for that one. And also for the next one, because I have to take the antiderivative, and there's a square root in there. So I need to rewrite this first. So I'm going to keep my take the integral symbol. I'm not ready to take the antiderivative yet. I'm going to rewrite this as x to the first power or the second root, x to the 1 half. dx just means with respect to x. And now I need to add 1 to 1 half. I might need to do some side work. If you can't add 1 to 1 half, that's fine. You would just have 1 half plus 2 halves would give you 3 halves. So that's what's going to go in the denominator and up top as my new power. 
following the same rule as above. The one thing that we should not leave is this complex fraction though. So one over three halves is actually gonna flip. You could put it in your calculator. One divided by three halves ends up being 0.6 repeating or two thirds. X to three halves. So when your new power is a fraction, you're going to have to flip it out front. So my new power was a three halves. So instead of one divided by three halves, I put it as two thirds X to the three halves.